In this lecture, we'll talk about what it means for an organization to be socially responsible. There are four dimensions of social responsibility, and they're illustrated here in this, fig this figure. This pyramid model is called the pyramid of social responsibility. Earning profits is the economic foundation of the pyramid, and of course, complying with the law, which is the next step. So organizations have this goal of earning a profit um, and they try to maximize that profit, but you have to do it in terms of compliance with legal and regulatory environments. However, a business whose sole objective is to maximize profits is not likely to consider its social responsibility beyond what might happen by their activities as they're making a profit beyond their borders, their boundaries even though these activities will probably be legal. Finally, voluntary responsibilities are an additional, additional activities that may not be required, but which promote human welfare and create goodwill within the community. Legal and economic concerns have been acknowledged in business, but voluntary ethic, ethical issues are more recent concerns. We define corporate citizenship as the extent to which businesses meet legal, ethical, economic, and voluntary responsibilities placed on them by their various stakeholders. A commitment to corporate citizenship by a firm indicates a strategic focus on fulfilling the social responsibility expected of it by its stakeholders. Corporate citizenship involves action and measurement of those actions to the of the extent to which a firm embraces corporate citizenship philosophy and then follows through by implementing citizenship and socially responsible initiatives. Although the concept of social responsibility is receiving more and more attention, it's still not universally accepted. This table lists some of the arguments for and against social responsibility for businesses. The main argument for social responsibility is that business helped create many of the social problems that are out there, and so it should play a significant role in solving them, especially in areas like pollution reduction, the cleanup of pollution, and when organizations move, a certain, move from a certain community or something like that, Many jobs were dependent upon that organization being there, and so there's a repercussions within the community. How does the community deal with situ such situations? Of course, the main argument against social responsibility is that these programs, this attention to the community, distracts from the primary goal of business, which is to earn a profit. As with ethics, managers consider social responsibility on a daily basis. Among the many social issues that managers must consider are the firm's relationship with owners and stockholders, employees, consumers, the environment, and the community. For example, Indra Nuye, CEO of PepsiCo, believes that companies must embrace purpose, not just for financial results, but also for the imprint they leave on society. She goes on to say that stakeholders, including employees, consumers, and regulators, will leave no doubt that the performance without purpose is not a long-term sustainable formula. Social responsibility is a dynamic area with issues changing constantly in response to society's demands. There is much evidence that social responsibility is associated with improved business performance. Consumers are refusing to buy from businesses that receive publicity about misconduct, which of course would then drive profits down. So social responsibility and earning a profit are increasingly interrelated. Businesses must first be responsible to their owners who are primarily concerned with earning a profit or a return on the in their investment in a company. A business's responsibility to its owners and investors as well as to the financial community at large, including maintaining proper accounting procedures, providing all relevant information to investors about the current and projected performance of the firm, 
and protecting the owner's rights and investments. In short, in all situations, the business has a responsibility to maximize the owner's investment in the firm. Of course, this includes both short-term maximizing investment value, but also longer-term, which corporate social responsibility increasingly interacts with. While the owners are indeed important, without employees, a business cannot carry out its goals. Employees expect businesses to provide a safe workplace. In fact, Congress has passed several laws regulating safety in the workplace, many of which are enforced by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA. Employees expect to be paid adequately for their work. Labor unions have made significant contributions to improving wages and benefits, as well as achieving an increased level of safety in the workplace by negotiating collective bargaining agreements. Workers must want equal opportunities for all employees. The Equal, opportunity, the equal Employment Opportunity Commission, EEOC, covers this point, so there's not discrimination in the workplace. Many Americans today believe that business has a social obligation to provide special opportunities for women and minorities to improve their standing in society. These are all aspects of understanding and acting as a socially responsible corporate citizen. A critical issue in business today is the business's responsibility to its customers, to consumers, who look to the business to provide them with satisfying, safe products and to respect their rights as consumers. The activities that independent individuals, groups, and organizations undertake to protect their rights as consumers are known as consumerism. Activities could include writing letters to companies, lobbying government agencies, making public service announcements, and boycotting companies that are deemed irresponsible. Many of the desires of those involved in the consumer movement have a foundation in John F. Kennedy's 1962 Consumer Bill of Rights, which highlighted four rights. The right to safety means that a business must not knowingly sell anything that could result in personal injury or harm to consumers. The right to be informed give consumers, gives consumers the freedom to review complete information about a product before it is purchased. The right to choose ensures that consumers have, a, have access to a variety of products and services at competitive prices. And the right to be heard assures consumers that their interests will receive full and sympathetic consideration when the government formulates policy. The role of the Federal Trade Commission's Bureau of Consumer Protection exists to protect consumers against unfair and deceptive or fraudulent practices. There are many aspects of social responsibility. An important one, which we'll cover in the next lecture, is sustainability within the environment.